Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk with the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Sarah Westwood, and I'm here today with White House reporter Hasten Willis. And Hasten, President Biden is ramping up his campaign travel ahead of the midterms. He's hit Pennsylvania a few times. He's been to Wisconsin. Is there a sense that that's going to be helpful for vulnerable Democrats, or is that potentially a liability? Well, we will see. Um, he's been talking for several months, I think at least since January, about uh, how he wanted to get out more. He thinks he's a good retail politician. He likes to be around people, whatever. And he's really ramping that up now. As you said, he's made, I think, four trips to fill, to, uh, to Pennsylvania just within a, about a couple of, about a two week period. Um, and another big storyline here, of course, was that for a long time, politicians did not want to be seen with him. And he would come into town. Other people uh, would have scheduled conflicts all of a sudden. Stacey Abrams in Georgia, for example, did that. Uh, Biden's approval ratings are now going back up a little bit. And uh, politicians are now uh, wanting to be seen with him. John Fetterman in Pennsylvania uh, decided to be seen with him uh, over Labor Day. And uh, Tim Ryan, um, who's running for Senate in Ohio, also is making an appearance with him. Uh, but they're still. Um, keeping their distance a little bit. Fetterman, the exact same day he announced that he's going to be seen with Biden on Labor Day, also said, uh, President Biden, you need to legalize or federally deschedule marijuana. So he made those announcements on the same day, basically saying, I'm going to be seen with you, but still keeping some distance away from him. Uh, as far as the effect it'll have on voters, I don't know. Uh, we will see once that, uh, once that happens in November. A big part of Biden's closing argument seems to be focusing on the Republican rhetoric around the 2020 election. He's going around giving some pretty aggressive speeches to that effect. But this week, his press secretary really struggled to answer questions about similarities that her past rhetoric and the rhetoric of other Democrats bear to what Biden is attacking. I think we have a clip of that. Just in trying to understand the new attention on the MAGA Republicans, you tweeted in 2016 oh, I knew Trump stole an election. You I was waiting, Peter, when you were going to ask me that question. Well, great. Here we go. <laughs> you tweeted Trump stole an election. You tweeted Brian Kemp stole an election. If denying election results yeah. is extreme now, yeah. Why so let's that? let's be really clear that that comparison that you made is just ridiculous. I have How been I have ridiculous? been well. You're asking me you're asking me a question. Yes. Let me answer it. And you said it was Wait, ridiculous. I was I was talking specifically at that time of what was happening with voting rights and the what was in danger of voting rights. That's what I was speaking to at the time. So do you see this as a successful strategy from the White House, especially as we're seeing more reports that some endangered Democrats are kind of uncomfortable with this alienating attack from Biden? Yeah, Biden has obviously decided that uh, instead of running on what he's doing, it's better to say, well, look at the alternative. Maybe you don't love what I'm doing, but here's what the uh, Republicans would do. They're, they're Trump people, whatever. And uh, right, that raises a lot of interesting questions uh, when it comes to Corinne Jean-Pierre, for example, the press secretary who has said two different elections were stolen, the 2016 uh, presidential race and the 2018 governor's race in Georgia uh, were stolen. So there's there's a little bit of uh, uh, unresolved uh, dissonance there. Do you think that this is a successful strategy for Democrats when they have so many members, incumbents right now, who are on the bubble, and this is a pretty divisive message? Yeah, some, some of the more moderate Democrats have, have indicated they're not really on board for this. I think the idea is basically here to turn out, uh, to, to, to raise turnout. You have people who are Democrats, may or may not vote in the midterms. This will kind of get them fired up um, and get them wanting to turn out. So those people, uh, I would think maybe are not as interested in whether or not Corinne Jean-Pierre tweeted something a few years ago about an election. They they want to hear the message. They're maybe scared of uh, of Trump Republicans and MAGA Republicans. They're going to come out and vote for Democrats. Uh, that's the White House's strategy anyway. You wrote in a piece this past week that Democratic mayors in some big cities are starting to put more pressure on the Biden administration about its border strategy now that you know the governors of Texas and Arizona are sort of making the migration crisis their problem. Tell us about what's going on. Yeah, this has been really interesting. Of course, the border issue has been going on for a very long time. The people uh, illegally crossing the border in uh, Texas and Arizona mostly. Um, Texas Governor Greg Abbott had an interesting idea in the spring to start busing some of these people, and these are these are volunteers. The state of Texas pays for it to send them uh, mostly to D.C., although he's also sent them to New York City and more recently to Chicago. So all of a the sudden, these uh, big major cities, all of them are officially sanctuary cities who are welcoming to migrants. Uh, they're, they're actually feeling this pressure. People are coming by the bus load. Uh, almost 10,000 have arrived uh, just in D.C. alone, and they're having to really deal with this firsthand. And their reaction has been very interesting. Uh, they're all calling on the federal government to step up and help. Uh, Muriel Bowser, the mayor of D.C., has called twice now 
for the Department of Defense to activate the National Guard and to uh, have them come in and help because he says they need, this is a crisis and they need so much help. Uh, the federal government has said no both times, leaving D.C. kind of uh, on its own. So it's been really interesting there. All these mayors are complaining about uh, what Governor Abbott is doing, Governor Ducey in Arizona. Uh, Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot really went after Abbott. She called him a racist, she called him a unpatriotic, and said he was a bad Christian. She was really upset about this. Uh, but again, it's like, well, these are sanctuary cities. You are welcoming to migrants. Uh, here, here they are. So, uh, so the, again, the dynamics here are really interesting on all, on all sides. Well, Houston, thanks so much for being here today. You can get more reporting from Houston and the rest of the White House team at WashingtonExaminer.com.